his name and he didn't respond. This is part of scare me. S stands for stimulate, trying to wake him up. So he didn't respond to that. So we're going to do what's called a sternum rub. I want you to take your knuckles like this and feel those bones right here. It's uncomfortable, right? That's what you're going to do. You're going to lean into them and rack your knuckles up and down on their sternum. It's going to elicit a pain response, which sometimes can wake them up or startle them, but it's not actually harming them. I'm sure you probably heard cold water smack them. They're having a hard time breathing. We don't need to do that, right? Let's stick with that one. So the next letter to scare me is C. C stands for call 911. So you want to call 911 and get paramedics on the way here. Um, used to be that you could say that it's possibly an overdose, but you don't want them to deprioritize it. So the best thing you can say is unresponsive individual. You don't know what happened. They're not responding. Please get here. Okay. Now they might tell you to stay on the line, go on ahead, but just set the phone down and leave it open. Devin still needs your help. The next letter to scare me is A. A stands for airway. First, you want to check and see if they're breathing. The best way to do this is to put your cheek over their nose and mouth like this. So you can feel if oxygen's coming in or out and you're parallel to their chest. So you can see if it's rising or falling. Now, if they're not breathing, you're about to help them. So you need to make sure that their mouth is clear. Okay. So, you know, when you have a kid or a dog and you haven't given them something to eat and you see them chewing on something. <laughs> You do that finger sweep, right? So that's what you're going to do. Just tip their head to the side, take two fingers, and just scoop their mouth. So if there's anything in it, you're knocking it out, okay? Put them back on their back. The next letter is scare me is R. R stands for rescue breathing. Now, if you're comfortable with it and they're not breathing, I really want you to do rescue breaths. Now, I'm going to show you in a while here. I'm going to give you some of these little handy-dandy CPR shields, okay? So if you have one of these, they're amazing because first of all, you, it's got pictures on it. You can't really screw it up, right? And you just set that piece in their mouth. Now Devin's not very pliable, so you gotta use your imagination. <laughs> and you set that in their mouth and it's going to create a barrier. So oxygen is getting through and nothing's getting on you. The other thing is it does help set their jaw and direct the flow of oxygen, which is really important. Sometimes when you're doing rescue breathing, it's actually going into their stomachs, not into their lungs because of the position, right? So this does help with that too. Now, the way you do rescue breaths, again, they're flat on their back. If you know full on CPR and you're comfortable doing that, go on ahead. But more than anything, we're just really concerned about getting oxygen and keeping their brain alive. Flat on their back, tilt their head back, pinch their nose, take a low sleep, deep breath in, and give them a breath. Now it's just like that, right? You're not trying to blow up a balloon or anything like that. You just want enough oxygen to get into them, to get to their brain. You should see their chest rise and fall. Now I want you to give them five or six breaths. Now this should only take 25 or 30 seconds, okay? So I know I said it's, it's one breath about every five seconds, but that's really hard to, uh, think of in that moment, just give them a breath, sit back, take two breaths yourself so you're not hyperventilating, okay? Because that can happen. After you've done that, 25, 30 seconds, move on. The next one is E. E stands for evaluate. Now, are they breathing on their own? We're going to talk more about what that means in just a minute, but if they're not breathing on their own, get to the naloxone, okay? The next letter scare me is M. M stands for muscular injection or nasal spray. So this is the actual administering of it. I'm going to show you all the parts that I have, okay? Now, Devin has like none of the right parts, so we have to use our imagination just a little bit. So the first one, Narcan nasal spray. A couple of cool things about this. You probably know that it's available over the counter now. You can even buy it on Amazon. It's pretty cool. But you do have to pay for it, right? So I'll, I'll give you some some ways to get it also in the, in the future. Um, another thing is the FDA approved a study that proved that the shelf life of two years, which is what it was before, it lost none of its effectiveness at 36 months or three years. So whatever this says, you can extend it by one year. And I can also tell you right now, I ate a ton of expired drugs in my addiction and they worked fine. If it's what you have, you're gonna use it, okay? Also these ones, the old ones, 
you open up the front and you get pictures that show you what to do. On all of the newer boxes, the pictures are right on the box. Okay, so it's pretty clear and easy. When you open it, you're going to find two packages. There's two doses in each one. Now in Narcan nasal spray, it is a four milligram dosage of naloxone, okay? Inside each one, you open up the package and you get this. Now you want the individual to still be lying on their back with their head tilted back slightly. Two fingers on the top, thumb on the bottom. It's gonna go straight up their nose and then you punch it with your thumb. Now it's going to all spray out right away, but wait a second or two before you pull it out. It's a liquid, it needs to roll back so that it can be absorbed into the mucous membranes, okay? Now it's one dose, keep doing this, it won't do you any good. This is just an example, okay? Now inside, another one which is, just like Narcan, this is called Cloxidone. This is an eight milligram nasal spray. More isn't always better. We'll go over that in a minute. But this is used exactly the same. Two doses in the kit, looks the same. It's just twice as strong, okay? The next one I'm gonna show you is the intramuscular. Now, it might come in a Sharps container, especially if you got it from like HIV Alliance, something like that. Maybe a really sweet pencil pouch if I gave it to you. Um, or possibly there's a new one, which I'll show you in just a minute. Inside each of these, we used to be putting two vials in each one. We now put four in each one. Now, each one of these only has, I believe, yeah, it's 0.4 milligrams. This is intermuscular, this is one dose. There's only a little bit of liquid in there, but it's the right amount, okay? You use this by flicking off the top part and you're gonna see this little stopper. Now also in all of these kits are intramuscular syringes. These aren't like the type I used in my addiction. These are a little more serious. They're designed to go through more, okay? You turn this upside down. This is pressure sealed. You insert the needle so you can see the tip in the liquid and you draw back. You do not need to put air into it. Just pull up whatever you get. Now, each one of these kits is either gonna have a paper insert or some nice pictures on it that'll show you how to use it too. And they all say to use upper arm, buttocks, or outer thigh. I can tell you right now, you just about go through my chicken arm with that needle, okay? And if you hit somebody's sciatica going for the buttocks, that really sucks. I mean, you're gonna save their life, but it does suck. So best outer thigh, okay? Now, Devin has none of the right parts, but if he had legs, we'd just be going in right here. These are designed to go through clothing. I don't care if they're in Carhartts, leather pants, it's gonna go right through it. Now, um, especially somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of body fat or muscle, you're going to wanna pinch their outer thigh like this, okay? And then go straight through the clothing. I have to tell you something that's kind of creepy, but you need to be prepared, okay? If you hit something solid, you hit the bone, just back it up a little bit and still push it in. It's okay. And they're just going to be a little bit sore, but they're going to be alive. So just know that it can happen. Let me put away all these things. I have two more intramuscular ones that I'm going to show you. This one, which I just gave to Andrew, is a new one milligram intramuscular. Okay. Now they used to send it in so many different pieces and you had to stick them all together. So it got really confusing and having to draw it up in that moment when you're panicking is a little bit hard. Okay. This one comes in a box, two pieces. You unscrew the purple cap, take off the yellow cap. You're going to plug it into here, take off the point, push it down to get the air out, outer thigh, punch it. Just like the other one, only you only have to do that action. That's literally it. So these are really amazing. And we're starting to get them donated in Oregon. Um, I actually got these from a friend in Colorado who mailed me a whole bunch of them. So there's one last intramuscular I'm gonna show you. Woo! And this one's called the auto injector. Now, this one's really sweet. It comes in a kit. 
which has two of these. They're a color and purple, always. Purple is opioid overdose awareness color, right? Um, so two doses and one trainer in a kit. And they were charging in Oregon about $1,800 for that kit. Um, in Texas, $3,800. They got a patent on it, so, you know. Um, they got sued. So they actually lost the right to produce them, but there are still some out there in the community. There's still some needle exchanges, treatment programs, and the VA had some that aren't expired yet that they're still handing out. They're really amazing because they do this. Finger, outer thigh. Five, four, three, two, one. Injection complete. It's really cool because it walks you through the entire thing, and they really need to have somebody else pick that up and start making them. Um, if they do, I'm going to buy stock in that, <coughs> seriously. Uh, so those are all the different types of naloxone that I have. There are a couple other injectable ones. I have one that is five milligrams, but that's a lot for an intramuscular. Um, and we don't have a lot of them out there, so I don't show that one as much. Um, but all of them are going to have a description of how to use it. There's one more letter for scare me, and that's E. B e stands for evaluate and support. And I will absolutely send screenshots to any of these slides to anybody who gets a hold of me later. Um, so you've given them, let's say you just gave them the Narcan. You're going to continue breathing for them. They used to say wait five to seven minutes. Then they said three to five. They now say wait two to three minutes before giving them a second dose. So I want you to keep breathing for them and wait. Paramedics should be there, right? But in an offhand situation, you're way out somewhere and they're not there yet, you're gonna go on ahead and give them a second dose. So if you have given them the eight milligram one, wait a full three minutes, okay? They're not finding that it's taking more to reverse fentanyl overdoses, it's just taking longer for it to act. Fentanyl is really tiny, sticky particles. So it takes longer to bump them out and to get it working, okay? So more isn't always better, low and slow is what you want to remember as long as you're breathing for them you're doing everything you can if they stop if they start breathing on their own do not give them any more okay so first of all when people come out of it i want you to stay with them head now thank you uh i want you to either stay with them or make sure that paramedics are there okay um most people are going to be really confused disoriented, not understand what's happened. I'm sure you've heard about people who come out of it uh, swinging or violent. I can tell you from experience, you are immediately dope sick, really, really sick, okay? And not everybody's gonna react well to that. It's very unpleasant. So the less naloxone you've given them that can bring them out of it, the better, okay? Um, the other thing is, uh, once they are breathing on their own and you've stopped giving them any more or you have to leave them for any reason i want you to put them in what's known as the recovery or rescue position that's going to be on their side hands under the head leg up being on your side is conducive to blood flow hands and the leg are going to keep them from rolling over and possibly suffocating okay so that was a lot right i want you to remember three things call 911 give them that naloxone and do the rescue breathing. If you're able to put any of those other pieces in it, awesome, but if you hit those three, perfect, okay? So what is naloxone and how does it work? Naloxone is what's known as an opioid receptor antagonist. That's the only part of your body that it works on. It works by flooding into your system, bumping any of the opioids off of the receptors and binding to them right? So they can't get through. So here's the thing about naloxone. It has a half-life, how long it lasts in your body, 30 to 80 minutes. Shortest opioid half-life is three to five hours. 
So what that means is it's only bumped them off the receptors and filled it so it can't get through. Those opioids are still in the system. As soon as it wears off, they're flooding right back on the receptors. That's why absolutely somebody needs to stay with them. We had somebody overdose um, a couple months back in an Oxford house and the women saved her life. And when the paramedics came, she said, I don't wanna go with you. And they made her sign a release that said, I understand I might die. And that's how serious it is. So please make sure somebody stays with them, explains to them that if they use any more, it's not gonna do anything. And once that wears off, which is at the most a little over an hour, they're gonna be okay, all right? Um, there's no serious side effects of it. Let's say uh, Devin actually ate too many benzos or he had a heart attack even, and you've given him naloxone, totally fine. It has zero potential for abuse. It cannot hurt anybody. It's not fun. If I did it right now, I wouldn't feel anything. All it does is fill opioid receptors. That's the only action it has in your body. Um, it's gonna be a safe answer for an opioid overdose for anybody. They give it to pregnant women, elderly, children, even babies, it's just a smaller dose. So I live in uh, Clackamas County and out there the sheriffs have a drug sniffing dog named Abby. <clears throat> and one day Abby was in the Clackamas County Jail doing cell checks. She got into a substance and started overdosing. They gave her naloxone and she's fine. It saved her life, brought her back. I just heard about another puppy that had its life saved in another state. So it is literally safe to use on anybody, okay? Um, I do say use on anybody because that's the hiccup, right? If I'm like, oh no, I'm overdosing, I can't recognize that, I'm out. I cannot self-administer it, okay? Oh. And you talk about a scary thing, okay? So we're creative humans and we're always gonna find some new, better, bigger way, cheaper way to get high, right? So right now there's a lot of uh, what's known as xylazine. It's also known as the Trank drug. It's also known as Trank or the zombie drug. Um, started on the East Coast, we watch the trends, it's here. Um, xylazine is not an opiate. It is a non-opioid animal tranquilizer. So the DEA is having a hard time reclassifying it, getting out of like farm feed stores. It was used to literally tranquilize large animals. It's not safe for human consumption. Um, they're seeing a lot of uh, open wounds, sores, things like that. That's also another reason why CPR shields are awesome. Um, Here's a, a scary statistic. In 2022, all of the drugs seized by the DEA, they tested 23% of the fentanyl powder and 7% of the pills all contain xylazine. That's nationwide, okay? Um, we're just starting to see the data for Oregon, but this is the hope in it, right? I said it's not an opioid, so naloxone doesn't work on it. Nearly all, I'd say nearly, there's gotta be one somewhere overdoses with xylazine contained opioids. So they're not seeking out xylazine, they're cutting it into the opioids to make a more impactful high, right? To make it cheaper, quicker high. So what that means is you always give naloxone and you always call 911. If there's xylazine or another type of cut in there, what you're going to see is the person will start breathing, but they're still sedated. That's why I said, do not give any more. If they're breathing, stop giving them any more. You have reversed the opioid part of the overdose. You've done what you can to save their lives. Stay with them. If they stop breathing, then absolutely give them some more um, or start breathing for them. But with xylazine and the other cuts, they're still gonna be down and unconscious. That's why you need to wait for paramedics to come. Make sure they're safe, okay? Does that make sense? I think, all right, I went over all the different types of naloxone. Okay, Good Samaritan Law. Oregon has one of the strongest, best Good Samaritan Laws out there. First thing that it states is if you were trying to render aid to someone who's experiencing an overdose, and let's say you accidentally injure them, let's say they're underage. I'm gonna tell you this, there's actually, uh, they've passed an ordinance that you can hand this to anybody 14 years of age or older without parental consent. 
we've been able to do trainings at high schools, things like that. Let's say you have somebody who is 12 and they overdosed, you can still help them, okay? That's not where that age thing comes in, still help them. If you accidentally injured Devin trying to help him, he can't sue you, okay? Do not be afraid to try and help him. The other thing it says is that uh, if there are drugs at the scene, you're not gonna be arrested for those. Devin wouldn't even be arrested for those drugs. Um, it also states that you will not be arrested for any simple warrants. You might have drug-related warrants. Um, other warrants, there's a good chance you might be, you know, but if it's drug-related, uh, possession, anything like that, maybe it's even theft, anything like that, you will not be arrested if you have a warrant. It's to encourage people to administer aid to someone experiencing an overdose. So I also have some resources for you all. First one is a website, getnaloxonenow.org. I can send this out later. It looks like this, blue banner, and it has the little hearts on it. So on this website, it's gonna have short little videos on how to administer the different types of naloxone. It also lists all the places that you can get it if you put in your town or your zip code. Um, this is nationwide, it will tell you everywhere. Um, like I said, you do not require a prescription to get it, but over-the-counter uh, box of Narcan costs about $45 right now. A good way out of that is to show up to your pharmacy to ask for it and to give them your insurance card. Even Oregon Health Plan will pay for one kit, which is two doses every six months. The only key is, though, you have to say, you can't say, I work in a place where people are overdosing. You have to say, I am in recovery. Um, that's something you can say, and they will give it to you and your insurance will pay for it because your insurance does not pay for a medication for somebody else, right? But you don't go on a blacklist or anything like that. All you have to say is that you're in recovery. You don't have to say I'm a drug addict. You have to say I'm in recovery, and they will give it to you. Also, um, if you're prescribed opiates for any reason, any kind of opioids, uh, ask your provider to also give you a prescription and they will write a prescription, which means your insurance automatically pays for it. Okay. Um, another resource that I have is another app. This is an app for your phone. It's called OP Rescue, OPI Rescue. This also shows you how to use it, um, different resources, treatment providers, all kinds of things like that, um, and how you can get it. Uh, another one that I like to tell everybody about is never use a lone hotline. So the only people who don't make it to recovery are the ones that die in their addiction. Yet we're not uh, quite there yet with realizing that nobody has ever died at a safe injection site. Um, so whatever we can do to help keep people alive, okay? Uh, never use alone is a hotline that if you Google it, look it up, it is a nationwide hotline. It even has little pamphlets or things that you can print off their website. Uh, it's the same number. Then they have a Spanish number also. Uh, it is manned by volunteers, just like me and you. What happens is if you are there using drugs somewhere by yourself, like I said, you cannot administer to yourself. You call this hotline, you tell them your first name and where you're at and they'll stay on the line with you while you use your drugs. If you stop responding at any point, they call 911 for you. This is just uh, an amazing, remarkable tool. They still need volunteers, so if anybody's ever willing to, it is really hard, really hard to do, but uh, they need so many more people than they have. Uh, final resource that I have for you all, which I'll make sure to leave whichever ones I have with me, Deterra. Have any of you ever seen this? Okay, so I showed up at a training with Clackamas County uh, Health Department and the woman sitting next to me is really into like working out and exercising and health and fitness and I'm sitting there registering people with her and I got my boxes of candy, you know, <laughs> and she has this sitting on the table and I'm like, that's gotta be some kind of supplemental, you know, I'm thinking doTERRA, like your oils and things. No, I look at it and it says drug deactivation system. So this literally safely disposes of drugs. Now this can be pills or prescription drugs that you no longer need, but it can also be street drugs. So the way I like to reference this, let's say you find a baggie of meth somewhere. What are you gonna do with it? 
uh, you have a couple options. You call non-emergency number and they say, why thanks, I'll send an officer by somewhere in the next 72 hours to pick that up. So you probably do what I've done before, which is you flush it, right? Uh, they did tests on all the fish in the waterways in Oregon a few years ago and they found three common denominators. You've heard this one, huh? Birth control, opioids, and antidepressants. It's what our, we're all peeing out that's not being filtered out, right? But that's messed up. Let's not put anything else down there. So you find that baggie, you open this, you open the bag, you don't have to dump it out, but you open the bag or you dump the pills in. There's this big Tide Pod looking thing. It's full of activated charcoal and a few other eco-friendly ingredients. You're gonna fill it about halfway with warm water. It's gonna get all bubbly for about a minute. Seal the top and throw it away. It literally deactivated. This is the only one out there on the market that deactivates drugs. So if the next day it happened to be your drugs and you're like, oh, I really want those, and you ate, all, drank all the cookies in here, it's not gonna do anything. It's gonna cleanse your system pretty good with all the activated charcoal, <laughs> but it's literally deactivated them. I have used these so many times. Um, I have used these on personal medications or a lot of the time uh, in the houses when somebody relapses and we find drugs. And every single time it's done wonders, throw it away and it creates a safe environment. So, so that's gonna go straight into the garbage. Right? Straight into the garbage afterwards. It's got a little Ziploc bag part at the top. It's just gonna, and on the back it says like a certain number of pills or whatever. I've pushed that a lot. I think it's okay. So I have um, a limited amount of these and I'm gonna make sure to pass those and um, I have some, I don't know, do you all even have Narcan here? I, we, we do, yeah, we, we have, have some. Yeah. some here at the church. Yeah. How much is some? Uh, There's one bag in the desk, kits. I think four kits total. I think we have four kits and each kit has two. Okay, let's and give you more. It's yeah. a goal yeah. to have yeah. it on my purse. They're old, yeah, they're so old, they've been around for a while. So I, uh, I really, and don't throw it away. Okay, I, we used to swap it out. I don't anymore. I just add to it and I tell people like, you got somebody who's overdosed or relapsed or using, send them with it. Absolutely, have them carry it. I'll make sure you get more. Plus, I know a woman whose life was saved from Narcan that had been out, expired for over seven years. Um, one way, uh, so they're even creating uh, little satchels for people who are home.